Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ, and today is all about the lipless crankbait. And not just that, I wanna to talk to you about four big mistakes that a lot of guys make with a lipless crankbait, so stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by the Bass Hat, this hat that I'm wearing right now. If you guys wanna help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, you can click the link in the description and pick one of these up. A few of you have messaged me about the water blue hats that you have ordered, and as it says on the website, these won't be available until that first week of December. So as soon as they are completed, I will ship them out to you immediately. To me, the lipless crankbait really has a kind of a special place in my heart because I was actually fishing with this lure the day that I fell in love with bass fishing. I think I was 13 years old out on Lake Toho in Florida fishing with my uncle and the bass were schooling all around us, literally blowing up on shiners out there on the middle of Lake Toho. And we were all throwing lipless crankbaits in the boat that day. And I literally just, I fell in love with bass fishing. I remember coming home to Ohio and during that spring, I had bought like five or six rattle traps and I fished the rattle traps everywhere and I caught a ton of bass on them. And literally from then on, I was obsessed with everything bass fishing. I really feel like the lipless crankbait has kind of gone on the back burner when it comes to fishing lures. You know, we have a ton of lures like square bill crankbaits, chatterbaits, spinnerbaits, you know, a ton of different lures. And it seems like guys don't fish just the standard lipless crankbait as much as they used to. Now there's definitely states like Texas or out in California or down in Florida, you know, some of these lakes that you have a lot of hydrilla or other types of grass in where you do see a lot of guys fish the lipless crankbait. You know, a lipless crankbait really became famous on, on Lake Sam Rayburn. That Rayburn Red really got the attraction of a lot of guys and a lot of guys were fishing that during the spring and it still works to this day on lakes like Lake Gunnersville. But there's a big portion of the country, you know, in that midsection and even up north where I feel like guys have kind of, just like I said, put the lipless crankbait on the back burner. And sometimes I think a lot of pond anglers don't always think of a lipless crankbait of being a really good pond bait and it is. So let's get into the four mistakes that a lot of guys make with a lipless crankbait. The first mistake that a lot of anglers make is kind of assuming that all lipless crankbaits are created equal. A lot of guys think if you get a half ounce of lipless crankbait from company X, it's the same as a half ounce lipless crankbait from company Y. Now this simply just isn't the case and for a number of reasons, even some reasons that you may not be thinking of. Now obviously the look of these crankbaits is going to be different from different companies. And another big thing is the sound. Sound is crucial when it comes to fishing a lipless crankbait. Crankbait. Back in the day, most lipless crankbaits, rattle trap style baits, all had a lot of BBs in them. And then several years later, the one knocker kind of came out. And this was basically a lipless crankbait that just had one ball inside of it. It has that one knocker sound. And that really produced a lot of bass for a long time. And it still does. But now I'm even starting to think that some of those BB style lipless crankbait baits actually are starting to catch fish better than the one knocker because the bass has simply heard a lot of those one knocker style baits. The thing about it though is sound is different in every single brand that you buy. They're gonna use a different number of BBs or balls or even different material. It's going to sound a little bit differently and sometimes sound in water makes a huge difference on you getting bites and not getting bites. If I have really loud conditions out there on the water, you know, if it's if it's very windy out or if the water's pretty stained and muddy, I actually like to use those louder one knocker style baits. Now, as the water starts to get clearer, I tend to use baits that have more BBs in them and that tends to produce pretty well for me. Now, there are a few different brands of lipless crankbaits that actually are silent, right? This is a pretty much completely silent bait here. This is the Duo Realis Apex Tune. To me, this particular bait really shines when you have more still conditions. Maybe there's been a good lipless crankbait bite and you get to the lake or the pond, wherever you're fishing, and it's really still conditions. A bait that has no sound on it, especially one that is translucent, like this one that I'm holding here, can really catch bass in those silent conditions. Now, another thing that a lot 
lot of guys don't necessarily think about when it comes to fishing a lipless crankbait is how far they dive in the water. Just because you have a half ounce bait from one company doesn't mean it's going to dive the same as a half ounce bait from another company. For instance, if you look at the two lures that I'm holding in my hand right now, these are both half ounce lures, but you can see that one of the heads of these baits is substantially larger than the other head. And that head, that little flat spot on the top of the head will actually act similarly to the bill of a crankbait. So this bait that has a little bit larger head on it tends to dive a little bit deeper than the one that has a smaller head on it. So instead of changing the weight of a lipless crankbait to get it to run a little bit deeper, sometimes you can actually just look through your lipless crankbaits and try to find the one that has a little bit bigger head on it. Sorry, I have to butt in real quick because after re-listening to that part of the video, I feel like I didn't explain it well enough because a lipless crankbait sinks, right? So technically you can fish that bait at whatever depth that you want to. But what I'm trying to say in this little part of the video is that if you and a buddy had the exact same rod, reel, line, and you guys had different lures on, one of you had that lure with the bigger head, the lipless crankbait with the bigger head, and one had that smaller headed lipless crankbait, and you guys both casted your bait out at the exact same time and retrieved it at the exact same speed, that lipless crankbait that has that little bit bigger head is actually going to dive down a little bit because that water is catching the front part of that head and it's forcing it to go down like a crankbait. Knowing this could really help you if you guys are fishing a grass flat that's six foot deep and maybe your buddy who has that bigger head, he's constantly digging too far into the grass. Using that little bit smaller headed bait is actually gonna keep that bait above the grass so that it's not bogging down in the grass but it's ticking the grass. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Now, another big difference that you see in different brands of lipless crankbaits is the way that they fall vertically in the water column. And this actually brings me to mistake number two. And mistake number two is not burying your retrieve when it comes to fishing a lipless crankbait. A lot of guys are gonna go out there, they're gonna cast that lipless crankbait in and they're just gonna bring it back to them, right? It might be a steady retrieve and it, or they might burn that lipless crankbait back to them. And that will get bites during certain times of the year you know especially for me during the middle of summer when some guys don't think to pick up a lipless crankbait sometimes you can really burn a lipless crankbait back to the boat and with that fast retrieve you can actually trigger some bass during the middle of summer that won't hit a lipless crankbait any other way but the big thing that i like to do when it comes to varying the retrieve of my lipless crankbait is letting that bait fall that is when you're going to get a ton of bites now if you're fishing a lipless crankbait around grass sometimes you're going to get that bait down in the grass. You're going to rip it free of the grass, let it sink for a split second, and that's when a bass is going to get it. Now, whether I'm fishing this bait around grass or not, I still like to let that bait fall from time to time. And this is something that I learned from my uncle, Uncle Todd, on that trip back when I was 13 years old. And he simply told me, hey, cast this thing out, reel it six or seven times, and kill it and then reel it six or seven times and kill it. And guys, that's the retrieve that I use a lot when I'm fishing a lipless crankbait, is casting it out, burning it, and letting it fall burning it and letting it fall. And guys, if, if you fish in a pond, this is a killer way to catch pond bass. A lot of times in a pond that's a little bit more bowl shaped, you know, you're not always going to be fishing that lipless crankbait around grass. So burning that thing and letting it fall and burning that thing and letting it fall, those fish are gonna come absolutely smack that thing on the fall. Now, the big thing that you do wanna pay attention to when these baits fall is how the baits fall. A Strike King Red Eye Shad, one of my favorite lipless crankbaits, was actually designed to shimmy as it falls. And that little shimmy, I think, sometimes can get you extra bites when it starts to fall. Other lipless crankbaits aren't always going to shimmy like that. Now, sometimes I don't think it makes a difference. Sometimes, no matter how that bait is falling, the bass are still going to react to it but there are days where it seems like that little bit of a shimmy in that strike king red eye shot is going to get you some extra bites just so you know i'm going to link some of my favorite lipless crankbaits down in the description if you want to pick some up there's also a lot of different ways to fish that lipless crankbait you know sometimes i like to creep it when it's really really cold water sometimes you can actually yo-yo that bait off the bottom kind of like a blade bait there's a lot of different ways you can fish a lipless crankbait besides casting it out and 
reeling it in. All right, mistake number three when it comes to fishing a lipless crankbait is assuming that a lipless crankbait is only made for grass. Like I talked about in the beginning of this video, there's a lot of states where there's a lot of grass that's prevalent in a lot of lakes, and those tend to be the lakes where lipless crankbaits are used a lot. But if you have a lake at your house that's really rocky, those can still be phenomenal lakes to use a lipless crankbait. And it's not always the first thought that a bass fisherman has. A lot of guys, if they get to a rocky lake, they might pick up a crankbait or a spinnerbait. But if you are fishing a lipless crankbait, you're gonna have a different vibration, a different look for those bass. And because of that, you might actually catch more bass on a lipless crankbait. You know, one of my favorite places still to this day is to fish lipless crankbaits on rock flats. You know, sometimes, especially if you're fishing for smallmouth bass, you're not always thinking about fishing a lipless crankbait. I'm telling you, a lipless is deadly, especially early and late in the year for those bass that are on those flats, those smallmouth, even largemouth or spotted bass. And I'm really gonna do that same retrieve where I'm gonna burn that bait for a little bit and kill it and let it fall, and that's typically when that bass gets it. Now, the one area that I tend to not fish a lipless crankbait in is when I have a lot of heavy wood. It's not because that bait wouldn't work in that situation. It's basically because you tend to get hung up a little bit more with a lipless crankbait than a bait like a square bill or a spinner bait. Now, with that being said, I actually heard that Mark Daniels Jr., a professional bass fisherman, he'll actually take the back treble hook off of a lipless crankbait and add a spinner to that bait. And he says that you can fish it through wood cover pretty effectively that way. I, that is something that I absolutely wanna try. It's something that I haven't yet. If you guys have tried that though, leave me a comment below because that's what I heard. And I'm really interested to see how well that bait can come through that wood cover. All right guys, the fourth mistake that a lot of anglers make when it comes to fishing a lipless crankbait is not having the right equipment. The thing about a lipless crankbait is it's a fairly heavy lure. You know, a lot of times I'm using a half ounce lipless crankbait and, and because it's fairly heavy in a smaller body, if the bass come up and jump or shake their head, they can really throw that lure around pretty easily and it tends to be a lure that you can lose a lot of fish on. So having the right equipment, the right tackle is really gonna allow you to put more fish in the boat or on the bank when you're fishing a lipless crankbait. Now, in my opinion, there's two main things that I'm going to do that's really going to help me to catch more fish and not lose so many fish on a lipless crankbait. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out the hooks of that lipless crankbait. If you guys follow the channel, you know the two types of hooks that I really, really love. One is the Berkley Fusion 19 treble hooks. This is a round bend style hook. I really like to fish this hook if I feel that the fish are kind of slapping at the bait they're not really eating the bait that well but if they are eating the bait that well you know like i fished all on the harris chain of lakes where they were absolutely annihilating a lipless crankbait and in that case i actually like to go to that ewg style hook which i love the mustad kvd triple grip style hook that is a hook that i have a lot of faith in and a lot of trust so simply switching out your hooks to one of those style of hooks is really going to help you to catch more fish and not lose so many fish the next thing that you can do which i think is vital to your equipment is have the right action rod to me i really want a parabolic bending rod when i fish a lipless crankbait. That parabolic bend really allows you to keep fish pegged on, especially in the two situations where we lose a lot of fish. One is on the jump. When you have a parabolic bending rod and that fish comes up and jumps, that rod is really loaded up and it keeps tension on that lipless crankbait where it's not gonna go flying out of the fish's mouth. And the other part where we lose a lot of fish is right on the side of the boat. You get them right up to the boat and they take that one last final dive and that's when you can lose a lot of those fish. Again, that parabolic bending rod is going to absorb that energy and help you to keep that fish pinned. Now, as far as using a fiberglass rod or a graphite rod or a composite rod, honestly, I think go with what you enjoy fishing the most. I used to fish lipless crankbaits on a fiberglass rod a lot. Then I fished it on a composite rod a lot. And now I tend to be more on the graphite side of things. But again, the big thing is the action. I want that parabolic bend. If you guys enjoyed this video, I did a really similar video on spinner baits that I'm gonna link right here. So you guys can click on this video if you wanna see my take on spinner bait mistakes that a lot of anglers make. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.